evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District 13 School Board meeting for Tuesday, April 23rd, 2013. Can we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, Laura, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Meyer? Here. Mr. Landwehr? Here. Mr. Larkin? Here. Mr. Bardell? Here. Uh, Ms. Lee is not here. Um, I understand she contacted. Yep. Um, and uh, Ms. Palmer here. Great. Thank you. As is our custom, our mission statement, Columbia Heights public schools create worlds of opportunity for every learner in partnership with supportive small town communities by challenging all to discover their talents, unleash their potential, and develop tools for lifelong success. Next on our agenda is the agenda approval adjustments, announcements, and correspondence. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda this evening? So moved. Second. Motion by Laura, second by Lori. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion has carried. The announcements, May 14th, Tuesday, 7 p.m. is the regular school board meeting here in the district community room. May 21st, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. is a school board work session here in the community room. May 27th, Monday, no school, Memorial Day. May 28th, Tuesday, 7 p.m., regular school board meeting here in the community room. <coughs> Superintendent Kelly, is there any correspondence? Mr. Chair, members, there is no correspondence tonight. All right, thank you very much. Next on our uh, agenda this evening is communication of the board. At this time, any citizen or employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that the administration follow up. The board, however, will not take any action at this meeting on request presented at this time. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the board this evening? All right, doesn't look like it. We will move on. Next uh, is our consent agenda, um, consisting of the personnel report. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second that. Motion by Laura, seconded by uh, Scott. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion is carried. Next on our agenda is acknowledgement of contributions. Um, bear with me here. We have a lot this evening, which is wonderful. Whereas uh, Minnesota Statute 123B02 permits school boards to receive for the benefit of the district, request donations or gift for any proper purchase, and apply the same to the purpose designated. In that behalf, the board may act as trustee of any trust created for the benefit of the district and for the benefit of pupils thereof. Therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District Number 13 that the School Board accepts with appreciation the contributions detailed in the background in this amount, $10,000. Tonight, we have a donation of $100 to Columbia Heights Public Schools from Nakia Jensen and Erica Linder, an anonymous donation of $1,200 to Columbia Heights Public Schools, and then the following donations were made to the Columbia Heights High School Scholarship Fund. The Columbia Heights High School Class of 1976, $750. Midwest Vending, $250. <clears throat> Cop Family Foundation, $1,750. Barbara Berg, $200. The Fridley Lions Club, $2,000. Malcolm Watson, $1,500. Constance Hansen, $25. Edward Rapp, $100. Carmen Daig, thank you, $50. Gail Hubel, Hubble, yeah. Hubel, thank you, $25. Ann O'Neill, $100. Dean Miley, $50. Wayne Kutsky, $50. Gordon Olson, $250. Katie McElvoy, $50. Ron Caldwell, $100. Roger and Karen Sedlowski, $100. Patricia Sawada, $25. Ann Farnham, $200. Michelle Edwardson, $50. Glenda Glore, $50. Ron Margo, $50. Ron Margo, 
E. Paul Terry, $50. Robert Yui, $25. Marilee Olin, $50. Betty Justin, $100. Luann Restad, $50. Thank you. Jan Vaughn, $100. Al Ogdi, $50. Robert Benson, $100. Nancy Hornbrook, $50. Kathleen <coughs> Kane, $100. Pamela Sigurdsson, $100. Value in kind, donation of books at Valley View Elementary from Christopher Johnson, estimated value $50. Donation of two gaming chairs to Columbia Heights Academy from Donald and Ann Carter for student support, estimated value $100. Donation of art supplies to Columbia Academy by Lisa Greer for art classes, estimated value of $30. And donation of books to Valley View Elementary by Mark II for school use, estimated value $20. Total fiscal year 2012-2013 monetary contributions to date, $47,067.38. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do I have a, we do a motion, or is this a resolution? Resolution. So we need a motion to. I'll move. <coughs> second. Motion by Ted, second by John. Any discussion on um, knowledge of contributions? I just want to say our scholarship evening night is just fantastic. If you have a chance to come, I highly encourage you to come. Oh, it's amazing. Very good comment. Yep. All right. Any other comments? Call the roll, please. Ms. Meyer. Aye. Mr. Landwehr. Aye. Mr. Larkin. Aye. Mr. Bardell. Aye. Um, Palmer. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Next on our agenda is discussion reports and information items. Uh, board members uh, will report on board activities since the last regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Um, we'll start with Ms. Meyer. Um, let's see, I was able to attend the MSBA phase three training on uh, building high performing school boards. Um, learned quite a bit about the different phases of forming teams, the norming, storming, forming, <laughs> and um, different styles and it was, it was really a fun day and got to do a lot of um, w watching school boards and, and looking at how they do things and being able to critique the, the videos and things. So it was, it was quite an interesting day. And then I was also able to attend the Valley View Carnival a couple of Fridays ago, which was really fun and very well attended. So I hope they raised a lot of money. Great. That was it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Landwehr. Uh, I was also at the Phase 3 training today with... Um, with Member Larkin, and uh, just seeing all the mistakes that could be made in a board meeting was very sobering, and it was great to see that, <laughs> see, be aware of that. So I'm very high, high sensitive to that now. Um, I also attended a WeMap uh, a board meeting um, to kind of get up to speed on what's happening with WeMap, and um, went to the uh, work session last week, and also to NSBA convention out in, in San Diego. N NSBA stands for National School Board Association. One of the things that we made us sensitive to today is to not use educational acronyms a lot. So I'm going to try to try not do that so everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Mr. Larkin. Um, let's see. We'll start with, uh, I think it was the 10th, uh, Sister Cities had their art show and I was able to attend and Got to see not only just a tremendous amount of beautiful art, but there was poetry, there was judging, uh, the elementary all school choir performed, the <coughs> Columbia Academy jazz band performed. It was just, it was a really fun night. Um, the work session I attended uh, last Thursday, uh, here they had the unveiling of the artwork for the Heritage Tower. Again, just a tremendous, uh, I'm just truly impressed with what the kids are able to do. Um, Highland and Valley View, thanks both of you for having it on the same night, but um, they had their uh, fine arts festival slash uh, choir band concerts and I had the opportunity to stop at Highland. I got to see all the artwork. They had some type of a science, I don't know if it was technically a science fair, it's similar to what Columbia Academy does. And then I got to hear uh, their choir sing and ORF perform. And then at Valley View, I had the opportunity to, again, look at all the art that the kids have done. And the fifth grade band was performing when we were there. And again, uh, just a phenomenal job. It's really exciting to see what the kids are doing at that level. 
Um, the variety show at Columbia Academy was Friday night, a very entertaining show. Um, I think that's actually available. Uh, is it on the, the school's website now? I know that the Islander had done or was working on doing a, a video of that. So if it's on, take advantage of it. The kids, again, for kids of that age to stand in front of their peers and sing, dance, and in some instances just be silly and have a good time doing it, very impressed, again, with how they did. Phase three training today, as, as uh, Member Landwehr mentioned, was extremely enlightening. Had an opportunity prior to this meeting, we met with a focus group for the uh, gifted and talented, uh, the blue ribbon study that they're currently doing. And then I also attended the uh, conference uh, in San Diego. So that's it. It's a lot. It was, it's been busy, yeah. but it's been fun. Yeah, good. So, Ms. Palmer. I had a very busy week. Um, twice I tried to attend the um, fine arts fair over at Highlands, and the first one was postponed until this past Thursday. So yeah, and then they had, they had the, the fun thing is the, is the artwork, without a doubt, wandering around. And one of the fun ones that I saw was where they took, um, they took cute little sayings like when pigs fly, and the kids all did their interpretations of them. I, I must have laughed so hard. I just looking at all the different ways you can interpret that and into a, an art form. So that was a lot of fun. And then the concert. Um, I, I attended the one earlier in the year. The kids were just playing these, you know, short little clips, and now they're playing full songs, and that's just in the course of a year. And what a fabulous job they're doing over there! Just a fabulous job. That was so neat. Um, and the other thing I attended as well was our 916, which is our special education district that we participate in. And um, the main uh, focus of that meeting was to talk about um, the upcoming plans for Carner Blue which is gonna be the name of the building that they're, um, that they're going to be built, a special use facility that they're gonna be building, um, looks like up in Blaine. And um, the reason that they had chosen uh, Carner Blue was because that is a butterfly that is, was indigenous to Anoka County. It actually was um, primary, its primary home was up and down this uh, 65 corridor. So I thought that was really interesting. And plus the shape of the building, it kinda looks a little bit like a dragonfly butterfly. So. That was really, really, really interesting, and I, I really hope to uh, see what more develops. Maybe we can take some sort of a, um, a site visit at some point uh, when they get that done. Um, I also attended the um, Heritage Tower uh, presentation and saw the artwork from the, from the, that was put together. It, it's such a great thing that we're actually, that the city and the schools are kind of working together to build, uh, to build a long-lasting memorial. And to have the, the kids' art uh, input into something that everybody is going to drive by on a regular basis and see, and to have the kids participate in that instead of hiring some artist, you know, you know, from New York or whatever to come in and do their interpretation of what Columbia Heights is, I think that this is going to be something that we can really hang our hat on. And they did such a great job. Um, and let me see. Um, oh, I also attended the work session. And, uh, and um, earlier today, the um, Gift and Talented Focus Group. And I really look forward to seeing stuff that comes out of that and you know, trying to make sure that we're always moving forward um, with our Gift and Talented program, bringing more opportunities to our kids. So um, thank you. You were busy too? I was very busy, yes. Great. Um, I also uh, was at the Heritage Shower Unveiling. It was very, I, I echo all the comments that were made. It was very impressive. Um, really enjoyed that a lot. Also, last night I had the opportunity to uh, go to a, um, I would say, a art show that was put on by our representative Keith Ellison down at uh, uh, University of Minnesota facility. It's an urban liaison sort of thing, which was really cool. Um, Columbia Heights was well represented. Two students had artwork down there and received awards, which was very nice. Um, I had um, um, lovely meetings with Superintendent Kelly. I also attended the National School Boards Association that you know some of us will talk about in a coming board meeting about what uh, you know made light bulbs appear above our heads or whatever that we learned. Um, the work session, and I'm sure I'm forgetting something else, but that's all I can remember. Thank you, Superintendent Kelly. Um, <clears throat> Chairman and members, 
Um, I had the delight to be able to attend with members of the school board, the National School Boards Conference, and I enjoyed learning both with them and with other school board members across and superintendents across the United States. And that will be a topic in May, uh, and I look forward to sharing some of that, of what the light bulbs went off in my head as well with all of you. Um, I attended Rotary, and I would like to uh, publicly thank the Rotary for the dictionaries that they distributed to the third graders, students, um, for their personal use. It's very, very exciting for them to be able to take the dictionaries home and to use them. So they um, did that at all the elementaries, and I want to thank the principals and the directors that were involved in that uh, as well. Um, I, too, attended the Heritage Tower uh, press conference, and I, I want to give a special thanks to the City of Columbia Heights, because not only did the students have an opportunity to do real-world um, artwork, but they got a chance to connect with their heritage and their roots, and that's, to me, priceless. Um, and we have such a great staff that that doesn't happen with a lot of without a lot of guidance, and so I want to thank all the staff that was involved in that. Um, on a more somber note, the administration team has been working um, very intensely on the process of staffing, and that continues to um, roll out <clears throat> and be a topic of discussion. I had coffee and conversations with several members of the community in the last week and um, meetings with individual members of the school board, including the chair. And that concludes my report for tonight. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, member My Myron and myself were also at the uh, Gifted and Talented Focus Group. I forgot, yeah. forgot about that. <laughs> for the record. Yeah. And we were Great. all at the work study. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> as was I. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda, it looks like we're doing uh, building vision cards for the high school. So tonight we have uh, Dwayne Burkus, Director of Teaching and Learning, and Joanne Karatoff, our Columbia Heights High School principal. Chair Bardell, Superintendent Kelly, members of the board, uh, pleased to be here tonight with uh, Principal Karatoff from the high school to talk about their vision card. Um, I read somewhere the other day that the uh, second most stressful job in the, in the world is being a high school teacher right after being an air traffic control uh, person. <laughs> I would guess that the principal, high school principal is probably right up in that area too. So, <laughs> But uh, we're pleased to be here to talk with you about the high school. It's challenges and the good things that are happening there. Uh, this past uh, week we've been doing focus groups on the AP program and the pre-AP program through our gifted and talented focus group. We had the opportunity today to sit down with um, a really fine group of AP students from the high school and talk to them about their AP courses, uh, their teachers, the high school. And I think what struck both Principal Busman and I who was there as well was um, how positive they were about their experience in those classes and that the teachers um, that they had in terms of their content knowledge, but also the dedication to them of giving their own time, a tremendous amount of time to those kids to help them pass those tests, to, to be able to gain that knowledge. So um, we've got a great bunch of kids, and we've got a great bunch of teachers, and we're proud of our high school. And uh, we have challenges, and we'll talk about some of those tonight that we, we have to solve. Um, and then there's great things that are happening as well, and we want to highlight those also. But as usual, I'm going to pass it off to our principal, uh, Karatov, to talk about that. Yeah. Good evening, Chair Bardell, board members, Superintendent Kelly. Um, I am here to present the high school scorecard. Um, as Director Burke has said, we know what we have to work on, and we do work very hard on that. And I have an amazing staff and an amazing group of students who every day come to that building excited about learning and teaching them. So to go through some of our background data, um, our enrollment over the last three years has um, declined. Um, we have actually, I'll talk about that later in the presentation because we have some goals set around that as a staff and what we're doing to help try to encourage more students to come here in addition to keeping the students we have. Our demographics have changed significantly as well. When I started here, the year later, we were talking 30, 30, 30. Um, that's no longer the case at the high school. The high school has 38% African American, 29% white, 24% Hispanic, and 4 and 5% Asian and American Indian, respectively. 
our demographics, this actually is from October 1st, and it shows that we were 71% free and reduced lunch on October 1st. We are now over 76%, um, which means that we will be a Title I school next year. Demographically, in the EL and the special education, um, we are at 17% seven, equally across the board, and I find that just so strange that they ended up with the same percentages. Um, I did watch the elementaries and the middle school presentations, and I know that um, we are a community that is ever-changing, and I anticipate some changes in this area in the near future. Our MCA grad data. Um, I actually put the percentages near every column to show that um, we know where we have work to do. In math, we did take a drop last year, and we dropped to 19%, but we've been doing some amazing things this year to try to um, get that score back to at least 31, if not higher next year, or this year. They just tested last week, so. <laughs> um, our reading scores, um, it kind of took a little dip last year, but we are on the steady incline, and we have a lot of goals around reading and writing in our district and in our building, so we anticipate that to go up higher. We are very proud of our writing scores. Our writing scores, students need to take the writing, the reading, and in the future, the math to graduate from high school, and that is a requirement. And we have 83% from last year that pass it on the first time. And then our science scores are slowly but surely inclining, or yeah, on the increase. Um, we went from 22% the previous year to 27%. And I'll talk a little bit more about each one of these if we have a goal at the high school set around each one. The strategic direction scorecard A, you're all familiar with this, um, and this is the expanding access and opportunities by turbocharging what works and redesigning what needs to be better. Um, so I'm just gonna walk you through each and every one. Um, A1 is use of articulated standards-based curriculum, and we have 85% of all classes either started or completed, um, and by the end of the year, we anticipate that all 85% of those will be completed by June. Um, use of licensed staff actively engaged in PLC's four questions on um, monthly at a, the minimum. Um, we have many staff who meet together and talk about data, but regarding the formal process of a PLC, we are just starting that process at the high school. We are, um, we are um, analyzing the book uh, Learning by Design by DuFors, who's been the pioneer in the PLC um, framework. Um, but we do have 57% of our staff who do meet regularly, weekly, if not daily, about around student. And those are teachers in our math department, our engineering and our physics collaborative, our AVID program, we have a site team that meets monthly, our EL teachers work very closely together, and our special education department meets weekly, and they talk specifically about students and what students need. And so it's not a PLC, but it's very similar in some of the questions that they answer. That would be professional learning. Prof oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's easy to do. Board, chair, board <laughs> landwear. Uh, yeah, we. I will try to get as many of uh, the letters explained. Because <laughs> we do have some. Practice. AVID is a, a achievement via individual determination, and EL is our English language learners. Um, use of effective teaching strategies resulting in student engagement in the learning objectives through walkthrough protocol feedback and coaching, um, through formal and informal um, evaluations or walkthroughs. We do have 90% of our teachers who are engaging students in the learning process. Um, presence of multi-tiered interventions for academics in reading and math. Um, we have multiple interventions for students who need interventions. Um, some of them that I listed here are our special ed and our EL support classes for students. We have study skills classes for students in the special ed department. We um, have a new pre-algebra intervention that we started last year, um, where if students aren't being successful at Algebra 1, catching them early, putting them in pre-algebra, getting the foundations, and then letting them have an opportunity for success to do well by the time they graduate and to pass those tests. Um, we, um, the math department has also really solidified their mastery quizzes. Um, we have MCA classes in reading and writing in the schedule during the daytime, and we have after-school math support in for the MCAs. We have a lot of online learning offerings um, for credit recovery, and we are expanding our summer school options next year. So every student has an opportunity to, um, to grow and excel when they need it. 
parent involvement, um, lessons and ideas present in school communications and events. Um, when we figured out the number on this, we figured because not we don't always have active numbers or emails, we do send out a bi-monthly newsletter that's put out by me and our staff. Um, we do have an additional senior newsletter informational bulletin that goes out that describes the whole graduation process from prom on to when they cross that stage. Um, we do new back to school registration nights that we started two summers ago where we invite the parents in to um, work through the schedule with their students, what they signed up for the previous spring, to sign up for clubs and activities and be involved and sign up in that way. We have increased our amount of all call announcements that we've done, and I'm sure some of you love hearing my voice on a Sunday night. Um, that is me, by the way. Um, we had REACH in our building this year, and that was a very exciting program. We had over 30 parents um, participate in that program. We have EL and AVID, which once again, or REACH, I couldn't tell you what REACH stands for. Well, I think there's this one they're aware of. Yeah, <laughs> the Family Involvement, Family acronyms. Education, Parent Education Program. Okay, yeah. there we go. And FAFSA, which is the, um, the, the, the form that parents have to fill out for student right. aid yeah. for college. We, hold, we held our second annual FAFSA informational night where we actually sit, parents bring their information to that night and we work through the process on the computers and they actually apply on that night. And we do have multiple curriculum nights throughout the year. So we try to get out as much information as we can to all of our parents about all of the activities and communications that are happening in our school. Participation in the arts and activities and athletics. Um, we are actively working with our activities department to ensure that we have accurate numbers. Um, last year, it was approximately 55% that, that were participating in athletics, um, but we know that there are a lot of clubs and activities where students um, are meeting, and we just want to make sure we have accurate numbers. So it is listed as a level one, but we will get more information to you. Um, participation gap between student groups participating in the arts, activities, and athletics, um, groups such as gender, free, and reduced lunch, and ethnicity. Um, the, in athletics, because that is really the only true data that we had, um, there is an 11% difference between male and female. So we could have put yellow blocks on two of these. Um, but in regards to actual participation among ethnicity, we have 36% participation among our white students, 31% participation among our black students, and 19% participation of our Latino students for a 17% gap. Parent engagement in points of contact, grades E through 12. Um, we are planning a survey to be done by the end of the school year, but once again, we don't have data to give to you, so um, we'll, we'll to be determined. <coughs> Strategic direction B. Um, this is to innovate, the, innovate to close the achievement gap with accountability and efficiency. Um, this is all about our scores. So last year when we were giving the MWEA MAP test, and that just stands for the organization and one of the, one of the tests that we use to assess where our students are, last year, um, and this data is all from the last school year because we still don't have our accurate numbers from this school year, 61% of Columbia Heights High School students achieved their growth goal in math on the MAP test. Um, so that put us at a level four. The MAP growth in the reading by student, we had 49% of our Columbia Heights High School students achieve the reading growth goal to put us at a level three. Um, the percentage of students um, by student group meeting NDBUA MAP growth targets, the greatest gap was 11%. We had 51% um, of our black students meet their goals and we had 40% of our white students meet their goals. The, MC, the MCA reading scores, as we saw in one of the earlier slides, we had 53% of Columbia Heights High School storing proficient or higher. There are two different ranges in the proficiency. One is ex ex exceeding proficiency. So we had 53% in that category. Um, as you saw in the previous slide, the MCA math scores for all grades tested, 19% of our students scored in the proficient range on the MCA math test. And for the science scores, um, we had 27% of Columbia Heights High School students scoring in the proficient range or higher on the MCA science tests. The MCA gap to standard for student groups in reading or math, the greatest gap was in the reading 
not in the math, it was in the reading, it was 30%. Our white students um, had 65% proficiency or higher, and our Hispanic students had 35%. Our ACT plan, the explorers given at the eighth grade, we give the plan at 10th grade at the high school. Um, our college and career readiness benchmarks in each of the four content areas, we had 11% of our students meet all four of those benchmarks. Um, and we're working diligently because we are focusing on college and career readiness at the high school, which we'll talk more about. Um, our equity and ACT plan, um, the college readiness benchmark, the biggest gap was between white and black students. 29% of our white students met proficient, or 29% of met the four benchmarks, whereas 4% of the black. Um, ACT participation in grades 11 and 12, and this one was a little tricky to answer because we had 25% of our students in 11th and 12th grade last year take the ACT. But a lot of seniors, if they get the score they want their junior year, they don't take it their senior year. No. So out of our graduating class last year, we had 46% of our graduates um, take the ACT over that two-year benchmark. Um, ACT composite scores of students in our district since eighth grade. This is always something that people ask. Well, how did our students who've been with us for all five years do? And their score was 21.1 on average. And that is right in line with the state. Um, and referrals out of class last year, our behavior referrals, um, we had 1,155 behavior referrals last year, which was almost cut in half from the previous year. Um, the difference between student groups in referrals out of class, our largest gap is between our black students. Um, our black students are only 38% of our population, but they attribute to 59% of our referrals. And our out-of-school suspension, we had 163 incidents last year. Um, our AP, which we're all doing an analysis as a district about our, our gifted and talented, as everyone's heard. Um, last year, we were right on the cusp of this, but we had 19% of our students um, in the graduating class take an AP test and pass it with a three or better. Although we encourage all of our students to take it, whether they feel they're ready for it or not, if they've gone through the program, it's just good practice. And so we had 19% pass um, with a three or higher. Our graduation rate, um, the state two years ago changed their model of how to project graduation rates, and I remember presenting this at the board, I think it was two years ago. Um, we have been in the low 80s um, all along, and so we had 81% last year, but in regards to this chart, um, that's in the 66th percentile of the state. Um, Post-secondary enrollment, we had over 60% of Columbia Heights High School graduates last year enrolled in college, um, and through our SLEDs, we're able to gather that data now, which is very exciting for us. Um, but we have two college and career readiness programs that are programs that are built within our school, and that is AVID, which is Achievement Via Individual Determination, and it's College Possible. I did change it to sit from Admission Possible because they've changed their name. Mm -hmm. Out of those two groups of students who have uh, out of that, those two groups, we've had 99.6% of our students who are still enrolled in college. We only have two students that are not enrolled in college at the time. So to get around our goals, um, we know we have work to do. Um, and I put last year's scores on here so that we can kind of see where we are. As a district and as a school, we made a commitment that we would try to increase our, liter our literacy and our students on the reading MCA test by 10%. So we said by spring of 2013, 63% of Columbia Heights High School 10th grade students will score at proficient level or higher on the MCA reading test. Um, by spring of 2013, remember we had 83% um, pass last year. We're hoping for 87% passing the writing test the first time on their grad MCA writing test. We have a lot of professional development around it. These are just a few of those items. Um, teachers, they set personal goals with me at the beginning of the year, and then at the end of the year, they reflect on those, and those are set around our building goals. So they all have individual ones that they're working on within their classrooms. Avid strategies um, in reading and writing in all classes are being used. We have worked collaboratively with the Minis University of Minnesota and the Minnesota Writing Project, where all of our teachers have set action research plans, and um, where they're, they're it's, it's all around writing. And that's at all subjects. Our SMART goal for math, um, by spring of 2013, 32% of Columbia Heights High School students will have a score of proficient or higher on the MCA test. The reason we put that at 32% was because a year ago we were at 31%, and we feel like there was 
we, we don't know all the reasons why it took such a dip, but we, have a, we anticipate that we will be there if not higher again this year. And the reason that we feel that way is because of those personal goals that teachers set, um, the average strategies that, that, the, that all the math teachers are using, such as Cornell Notes, um, we have that pre-algebra intervention that I mentioned. We're using a computer program called ST Math for students to get that foundation in math. The teachers have worked really hard on improving those mastery quizzes. Um, our teachers have put YouTube videos to kind of do learning at home so that students, when they get stuck, they can, they can go and see their teacher teaching something. So at least one, but usually two um, YouTube videos are available, available around every mastery skill that they're doing on the mastery quizzes. And altogether, they have calculated that over 6,000 views have happened on those mastery quizzes. Um, and they have now, we always talk about Algebra 1 and Geometry, but our Algebra 2 and our Trigonometry are high lo higher level math, excuse me, um, that they now are doing cumulative reviews about foundations and reviewing Algebra 1 as they're working on Algebra 2 just to make sure that they don't lose the, the basics um, because it's easier to just move on and easy to forget. Our SMART goal around science, by spring of 2013, 35% of Columbia Heights High School biology students will score at the proficiency level on the MCA science test. Last year we were at 27. And that is a huge increase as well. But the reason that we put that there are for several different reasons. Number one, those goals that our teachers set. Number two, the teachers are using Cornell notes, but they're also using avid interactive notebooks where on one, they, they, they post everything in their notebook where on one side is for right brain activities and one side is the actual notes so that they can cross reference their notes and it's all in one location. They don't have to go to a textbook to a notebook to handout. Everything is put into their notebooks. They have done vertical planning and alignment at the high school and we have redesigned our high school alignment. It, we used to have biology taught at 10th grade with a physical science course at, the, at 9th grade. Now we have environmental science at 9th grade. We have a physics with astronomy at 10th grade and biology is now taught at 11th grade. So we're kind of in that transition year where we have very small amount of biology courses. Um, next year, the 10th graders will be, um, we'll, we'll have more students, but um, we feel like having the foundation in science with two courses instead of just one will help improve those scores as well. And then a SMART goal around behavior. By June of 2013, the number of students sent on referral for a behavior will decrease by 10%. And by June of 2013, the number of incidents resulting in out-of-school suspension will decrease by 10%. We had 15 of our department chairs last year attend a training, and they follow through with this. Um, and it was called Top 20 Training, Emotional Intelligence in the Classroom. I still hear our staff talking about some of the key terms, and they, um, they still use some of these things in their classroom. But we are researching a school-wide system, and through that, um, you know, we're going to have something different implemented next year. Um, analysis of current rules, um, strategies for improvement. We have a, a, a committee of teachers that meet and constantly review what's working for us, what's not working for us, and to try to make our rules um, so that students can achieve success, but that we can still maintain the order in our building. And um, we have developed around, we have done a lot of development around engagement in the classroom um, through AVID and through other programs. And when there's engagement, there's less behavior issues. So we're hoping to see that. And we have, at the high school, have a college and career readiness goal. And this is one just specific for us. And this says by September 15th of 2013, the number of graduates from Columbia Heights High School will increase by 4%. The state is looking for 90% within the next five years and 100% within the next 10 years. And so they have us on a 2% increase. They've told us what they'd like our growth to be, but we feel that through a lot of the programming that we have and a lot of the collaborations that we have, we can achieve this goal. And then, and we have September 15th as a date because students who graduate and meet the requirements in the summer all the way up through September 15th count in our graduation rates for this current year. By September of 2013, we also have a goal that the number of students entering college will increase by 10%. Um, this year, remember, it was 60%, so we're hoping for 70%. And so teachers set their personal goals. We had, one, we had them set one around college and career readiness this year as well. We have AVID, and then there's another acronym up there, WICKER. And WICKER is the AVID curriculum, and it stands for Writing, Inquiry, inquiry Collaboration, Organization, and Reading. And all of the strategies in, in AVID support those five elements. And by having that, students are then better prepared when they go to college. 
Um, we have put ramp up to readiness into um, our advisory programs, and it is 100% in our Leadership 9 Academy class as well, um, where students are setting goals and, and looking at what they'd like to do in the future, and they're starting really early. And I can't wait to tell you about something else that we're doing. So College Application Week, we started that last year as a pilot school for the Minnesota State Department of Education, and this year we continued it, and next year, every year, we've improved it, and we revamp, and we try to figure out something new and creative that we can do to get more students applying for college. And we are doing a lot of data review and discussions around college entrance scores and data, especially now that we have some more data that we can actually find our students in college. So our writing initiative, I talked about AVID and the strategies that we use, and that Wicker, the writing and the reading have been our focus. The district made a 10% goal, and we as a school did. So our English department has worked really hard over the last year and a half, and they have done their curriculum review around the Common Core standards. And they have piloted one-to-one -one laptops this year, and they are also using an online grading program so students can write more essays, and the program grades the grammatical errors. And so students can constantly be revamping that while the teachers are working with them on the content. Hmm. Um, and so we've worked with the Minnesota Writing Project this year, and many of our teachers have started an e-portfolio. We gave a workshop earlier this year where they all got to dabble with it, but there are some that have really taken it and run with it. Our College and Career Readiness Initiative. Um, I invite you all Thursday, because Thursday is our second annual College and Career Fair, um, where last year we had 25, um, we had 25 colleges and businesses represented and community um, organizations represented. Um, this year we have over 40 and it's growing. Last year we brought the eighth graders up. This year we're bringing two out of three of the school's fifth grade groups up. Highland and Valley View will be walking over. It's a little tougher for North Park, um, but Valley View and Highland will be walking over this year. Um, College Application Week, once again, was piloted. We have a program called Genesis Works, and that's a work program that um, where students actually, they apply, they interview. Um, and when it started, we had two kids in it, and then we had eight, and then this year we've had 17, and we have over 40 applicants for next year. And they think that they might, they're looking for a good round 30, and that's very exciting because our students make $10 an hour and they work at fantastic companies in the community such as Medtronic and Thrivent Financial, and they're doing IT work and they're really getting that hands-on experience to build their resumes as well. Um, we adopted the ramp-up curriculum this year in our advisory and leadership classes. Our leadership academy classes also do a lot around college and career setting, uh, goal setting. We have 98% of our staff trained in AVID. Um, we had two new people, but we've done a lot of training with them. They just weren't trained by specific AVID people. We have a fantastic partnership, as um, Board Member Myers was talking about, with 916 and sending our students to the work programs at Century College. Um, work experience expansion has over 55 students this year, which is very excited. They're out in the community and they're earning high school credit for working. Um, and we have a committee of staff members that have been formed to constantly review this data and to try to figure out ways to support our students. And we have, um, through Ann Dillard, she has uh, created Dress for Success Days at the high school, and our choice is your students. Um, get to go and hear African American speakers here. They're coming from the professional community, and they're hearing about what they need to be successful. And they dress for success. It's really fun to have on our campus. So here are some pictures. Um, we have several about our college and career readiness goal. Last year's, uh, these are some pictures of last year's college and career fair. Somebody looking familiar right there on the edge. Um, and those are the eighth graders last year. Look at what a beautiful day it was when they walked up on that Thursday um, wearing shorts. Um, so it, it was very well attended last year, but this year we're just anticipating great success. And we have worksheets to go along with it for the fifth graders and the eighth graders this year so that they can start to know what to talk to the colleges about this year. Last year, as I said, we had our first graduating AVID class last year. Um, and so there are just a couple pictures of them at um, their banquet and at the graduation. And College Possible, um, as you see, these are our highlight programs because we have 99.6% attending college. So that's this year's current College Possible group. Last year, we started a, a program where um, we send our freshmen 
MCA testing at the high school level is two days for our juniors and sophomores because the writing and the math, the reading and the math tests are two days long. But the writing, they only write one essay, and it's only a one day long essay. So on the day when the the sophomores and juniors are testing, we've been sending our students to college. Last year, our freshmen went to St. Olaf. This year, they went to the University of Minnesota, and you can see their tour guide there. And they had a presentation about what the University of Minnesota has to offer. Um, much more cloudier day there, but um, it's just such a great experience and asking them when they come back into the building how was it and they say now I know what I need to do and hearing those comments is very powerful we have an arts and engineering initiative um, we have a collaboration between Columbia Academy engineering teachers and the high school um, and they've been led through our teaching and learning and the University of Minnesota has represented themselves at these meetings as well to really make sure that we are um, cutting edge in our engineering program at all secondary levels um, we have been investigating at the high school level about changing our engineering space. Um, and we have a team, our, our team has developed new courses um, and opportunities for 21st century skills and cutting edge technology, such as a new revamped TV production type course next year. Um, we are offering engineering courses to the older students. Um, it's just very exciting to see all these things happen. This is our arts initiative as well. Uh, we have collaborative vertical teaming between our secondary and our high school as well. And we have new courses in technology, digital imagery, and photography. Um, th but they use the creative per, uh, artistics perspective, which is a little different. They're both uh, offering computer courses, but it's just the perspective of them. Our first robotics team has participated in four years now of the first robotics competition at the University of Minnesota. Um, we offered this year in our arts program, we offered an extracurricular of the one act play. It was kind of cute. It was a little half hour play and it was a comedy. Um, and we received record number of awards in our scholastic sister city and state art competitions in art. So I've got some of that to show you. Um, the Minnesota Scholastic Art Award gold key recipients, they have gold, silver, they have different levels. We received three this year, which is pretty phenomenal. And these were their, um, these were their pieces of art. We, this is our robotics program, and the robotics competition just happened, so these are last year's robotics pictures, but we partner with BAE Systems down in Northeast Minneapolis, and our students go down, they get cleared. Those are the BAE people along with our high school students, and you can see in the top left, those are the students. It goes to the computer. They find out their task. They figure it out in the computer, and the students work on that, and then the final product is the University of Minnesota competition down at the bottom. And then our engineering department, um, you see two students. We expanded our engineering class for the pre-AP that has, um, it was a semester long and now it's year long. So I'm going to show you a video here of the first semester activity, which is, um, I'll kind of explain it when it's in the process of playing. So let's hope that this works. So basically here the task is, is that they have weights and they have to, they build this crane 100% through the laser printer and through design. And the students will lift the weight up and they have to put it on three different level buildings without moving the crane. So you'll see them and see how successful they were. Okay, so they go through and they do the three different levels of the building. And then this is the roller coaster project of the students that you just saw. And this is a quick, where did it go? This is just a quick little video of just watching it roll. So there's a little ball on that incline. And it made it. <laughs> so we have parent engagement committee where we are doing some exciting things to try to get more parents into our building. As secondary, it's always harder to get parents in, in the building at the high school level. So we've tried 
tailgating parties at the beginning of the year. We had our first informational PTO meeting. The high school hasn't had a PTO in quite some time. And we had 11 parents come, and we have the next one set for May 9th. So high school parents, if you're out there, please come to the Media Center on May 9th. Um, we are doing more all calls, and we're doing them in English and in Spanish. Um, we had REACH and we have a Latino community, community liaison who works with our families um, and they do breakfast and they give a lot of information. Um, and we changed our parent-teacher conferences to go out of the Highlander Center because parents really liked the parking lot being so close and we love feedback from parents. And we have a committee that works on that. And so here are some pictures of the REACH graduation in the top left, the Latino family breakfast in the bottom left, the FAFSA informational night that I talked about earlier on the top right, and then that's just an example of the parents participating in the AVID family night. We have an enrollment and marketing initiative. We actually have a committee of teachers who are working to look at what we're doing within our building to keep our students, um, and then what we can do to get more students who choose not to come to us. So we have done various things. We um, are looking at online learning components and hybrid courses and things of that nature to try to get entice more students here. Um, we are. Um, this committee, we talked about it, and when the drama department scaled the heights to talk about the play, we actually had the newspaper, and staff members and administration went and walked the community with them and knocked on doors and got to talk to our community. And it was actually a really, it was cold, but it was a really fun Saturday morning two weeks ago. Um, once again, we have the new PTO starting, and um, we've started things within our students about class competitions. And they get, um, they, monthly we're checking attendance, grades, improvement on tardies, whatever it is, we're looking at all kinds of data and we're rewarding our students with movie nights or um, we had root beer floats in the, the other day. Um, and so when the classes win, they're kind of excited about that. And we announced it in announcements. So you talked about the piece, Tower Heritage Design, and so I just want to showcase some of the things that we have in our building. This is a picture, and although the picture is very small, if you look in scale to where the students are, look at how high those pictures are. Um, I mean, it was basically the width of, of the boardroom here. And it was awe-inspiring what the work these students can do. And the first picture is around education, the second is around labor, third one is recreation, and the fourth one is our diversity. And we have an amazing group of kids, and I get the goosebumps, and I'm so proud of them every time I talk about them. So, um, And then just some other pictures. We have a fantastic partnership with all of our community. Um, our police department started a brand new teen academy this year where it was two weeks long. Um, they took them on a trip. They showed them what they do. They brought in dogs. I mean, they, they, it was all about law enforcement and what that has to offer. But overall, we have Heights pride in everything that we do. And so there's a picture of our football team, which sh saw success this year. And so I wanted to showcase them and having, um, having wins this year. And before we talk about graduation, there's just one more, well, there's one more quick video. That on your mark. Yeah, I won't that. do the whole thing because it is a little long. Go! Our students are innovative. These boats were designed completely by the students with cardboard and duct tape. And they're floating. Well, it didn't work quite. So here we go. But it was it was a really fun uh, thing to watch them try to get to the other side of the pool and cheer each other on. And um, we're trying everything that we can in our building to see students find success and, and to support them in all facets. So graduation is the end goal, which is why that picture is up there, um, coming up very soon. And we're very excited about that. So that is what's happening at the high school. Are there any questions? Questions, comments? Only that little bit. <laughs> <laughs> High school has so much happening in Get it that, that in I had to pare week, it down. Right? Okay. <laughs> wow. I just want to say, as a, as a high school parent, I've noticed the, the increased communication, and it's really made a big difference. So, kudos on that. It's really noticeable. So, Thank you. Yeah. And talking about college possible, it fits right into our scholarships. Not only do we want to prepare kids to go to college, but help fund them too so absolutely and thanks to the community for helping us absolutely. with that oh absolutely yeah sure and is the robotics team going to come here and give us a presentation 
I will ask them. I would love it. It is so much they fun. They didn't do that last year. We will make oh, sure that they, they I will find out if, if the robot is still working. <laughs> That's okay. They can just bring it in. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I okay. would still love to see it. Perfect. So. Well, again, uh, sounds like there's a lot of great things going on, and and uh, yeah, we have issues, but we have a plan to deal with them. And um, I have to believe that we're not unlike other high schools in the state. So, high school's a challenging time. It certainly was for me. And um, hang in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, we love what we do. <laughs> We know. <laughs> and it shows. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Next on our agenda is um, strategic direction C, knowing honor who we are to build strong relationships. And this is um, Nicole Halby, Director of Student Services. Uh, Mr. Fort, Valley View Elementary Principal, welcome. Thank you, Chair Bardell, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly. I cute. I turned to uh, Director Hennikins and I said, how do I exit out of their <laughs> presentation? <laughs> he goes, escape. <laughs> Thank you, Director Hennikins. Uh, we're here to present, um, Principal Fort and I are here to present there, <clears throat> uh, Strategic Plan C. And you'll see a lovely picture of one of our graduating classes of REACH. And REACH, the acronym stands for Realizing Educational Achievement in Columbia Heights. So it's very clever. They came up with that um, name as a group. And um, we're very proud of all of the buildings and the families participating in the REACH graduation, helping their kids as partners. And we're really um, supportive in this district of parents as partners in their child's educational process. So we're very proud of that. So we wanted to start with that slide. There's our mission statement, which you'll see in all the presentations that Chair Bardell read. Our core values, which also are in the boardroom. Our vision for 2015, what we intend to create. And then highlighting our, for strategic plan C, knowing and honoring who we are to build strong relationships. Uh, Superintendent Kelly always talks about um, the three R's, and one of those is relationships. So we're going to talk about um, the strategic plan direction C, and this begins to look very familiar to the board and to the audience um, regarding how we um, rate them and rank them. I'll just review quickly that level one would be the red, that's the intervention level. Level two would be a high concern. Level three is baseline, level four progressing, and level five is vision. Like we like to say, 99.9% .9 at level five, we can always improve on that 0.1%. So, um, C1 is increased enrollment in pre-advanced placement and advanced placement classes for students of color to be commensurate with their peers. And as you can see, we're at level four, so we're very solid in that, that uh, the high school that just finished their nice presentation does a fantastic job at encouraging all kids who want to take advanced placement classes to do so. And the pre-AP classes are at the middle school and at the high school. And then you'll note, um, if it's not highlighted, you'll see on the right um, what timeline we're going to be able to um, collect that data. So enrich curriculum with a variety of cultural perspectives in 80% of the courses. And we're working in collaboration with um, Dwayne Burkus, Director Dwayne Burkus and Teaching and Learning on making that happen. And then um, family involvement, such as the REACH program. Um, 40 to 49 percent of the targeted families participated. And what that means is that um, under the direction of teaching and learning and coordinator Jane Reardon, who spearheads the REACH program with many, many of our employees um, that work in the district and volunteers, um, they invite parents that would benefit from REACH. And so we really want um, 40 to 49 percent of those who are invited to participate in our programs. Equity teams established at each building with a variety of employee groups. Um, we're at level five. Six out of the six buildings are implementing plans for equity teams. Cultural family events. We always hear about the board members attending all these wonderful events. And we'd like to see each building at least three times per year having cultural family events. 
reducing the suspensions and referrals of student of color, a 25 or 21 to 25 percent difference between the referred student demographics and the general population. So we're at a little bit of a high concern there. We're working on it. It actually has improved from the previous year. Licensed staff demographics as compared to student populations. And so we compare ourselves to um, the six districts around us. And so we're at, a, we're at a pretty solid level in that area. It's a conversation that all the districts are having. And then on eight and nine, again, we're, uh, we will be collecting that data next year. Eight is students and families feel welcome into district schools measured by family satisfaction and climate surveys. So those will be going out in the spring and then um, next winter as well. And then the digital divide access after school hours, Director Hennikins um, is working with um, our department and with the schools at doing a survey to ask students and families what kind of access do you have to the internet mm -hmm. so that we can, as a district, try to meet the needs of kids and families that don't have access. So you want to talk about the different levels where we're at? This is all the fun stuff with the numbers. Yeah, I think, uh, good evening, everyone. I think you basically discussed all the different levels. Okay. What I was going to uh, prepared to do was to talk about the matrix, right? This comes okay. right after this. Okay, so these, this is just another way to look at the levels if you don't like looking at the colorful chart. As uh, Nicole mentioned, uh, C8 and C9 are uh, going to be assessed next year, 2013 2014. On the matrix, uh, C1 through 7 represents 60% of the total of 100% of a, of a, a weighted score. So again, those last two, C8 and C9, will be assessed next year. Uh, maximum score for those seven goals is 2.5, and our score was 1.5 uh, out of that, out of the 2.5. The obviously, as stated before, the closer to level five on each of those uh, areas, then the higher the score. Right. Uh, our goal is to be as close to level five as possible. Uh, what we did, uh, the two lower scores we had were C3 and C6, and those are the ones that are below baseline. So at, at least we, at minimally, we want to be at baseline, which is level three. So that's why uh, we made a decision to target our SMART goals at C3 and C6. Uh, I'm going to talk about C3, and Nicole is going to talk about C6. So C6 is to reduce suspensions and referrals of students to reflect the general population from 22.9% difference between referred student demographics and the general population to 18% difference. So we would like to narrow that um, gap as you um, saw in the high school's presentation. And if I were here, which I will be in the summer to present on DERS, on the Discipline Incident Reporting System for the state, um, we have dramatically gone down in referrals and suspensions across the board in the district. Behavior is on the upswing, it's improving, but we'd like to decrease it another 5%. Uh, C3, uh, one thing that's different is this year uh, we, have, we now have a district family involvement committee, and each site has a family involvement committee as well. So that's something that's uh, uh, in addition from previous times. 70% um, of the districts of uh, the district are families of color. so. Our goal in targeting this particular one is uh, to target more families of color uh, for their for involvement. Um, this particular strategic direction stated about building relationships. We we feel like we do that in a in a number of um, number of ways. We do it daily in our classes with students when we individualize and we differentiate instruction for those students. We feel like we do it and do, uh, we help to try to build community when we have our family events, such as some of those that you mentioned about our, our carnival, our picnic, the movie nights. Um, uh, and um, uh, we will uh, continue to uh, target uh, the building those relationships with families in events like that. One of the things that we do with our staffs, we have most of our staff have uh, their own websites. So they can be contacted uh, at any time and communicate with families. And of course, email is widely used as, as well as our uh, robocalls. Uh, all, all the principals at least monthly make uh, calls updating uh, parents and families about our, um, 
what's going on in our school and any, any news and uh, upcoming events that we might have. So that is um, our hope, again, is to target those families to get at least to a, a benchmark level and, of course, even, even higher than that. Research shows that families that, have, um, uh, that are involved in their child's education are those families that are more successful in school. So that's our overall goal is to uh, increase uh, in, in those aspects. Thank you very much. Could I just make one other comment? Sure. <clears throat> just wanted to... Uh, comment on Director Larkin's um, a shirt that is one uh, attractive shirt that, sh that you have on there, and I wanted to commend you for modeling it for our uh, community. Thank you very much. But where, do you, where would you get a shirt like that? I believe you can stop by Valley View, and they have several there. Okay, well, thank, thank you very much. Putting in a plug. <laughs> thank you. Any questions or comments for uh, Mr. Ford? And, um, Ms. Howlby. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we know where we are and onward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda, we have Mr. Bill Holmgren, who is going to talk to us about health and safety projects. Chairman Bardell, uh, school board members, uh, Superintendent Kathy Kelly. I can't believe it's been a year again already since we talked about health and safety. Um, but the MDE wants us to go through a little more detail with our, safety, our health and safety program with, the, with our boards than we have in the past. So I'm going to touch on our projects uh, that we're working on and then uh, give you an idea of what we're spending um, over the next three-year period um, coming up. Now, something that we do on every year, this is something I mean, we're mandated um, by the state of Minnesota, the things that we've got to uh, look at in our buildings. Uh, all our elevators um, have safety inspections on a yearly basis. Uh, anything that we have that lifts anybody up, um, which we have, we have a few in the district, um, all have to be inspected. Um, backflow preventers um, all have to be tested on a yearly basis. Um, every year, um, there's protective equipment we need for the um, custodial unit. Um, so they, they are looked at it every year and whether we need to, anything needs to be replaced. Our playgrounds are looked at every year and whether they're safe for our kids to use. And of course, then we have hazardous waste removal, which is really just a recycling program um, that we look at on a yearly basis. The, the other thing that's in, in the whole management program of, the health, of our health and safety, these are the other pieces that we look at on a yearly basis. We look at all the machine guarding, um, not only in the classroom, but also in the uh, work areas of the uh, custodial units. Um, chemical hygiene is looked at, making sure that our chemicals are stored in, the, uh, in a safe and a clean um, way. Uh, we have a safety committee that uh, uh, meets on a regular basis. Um, all those activities are, involved, are included in our management uh, program. Asbestos is looked at in our buildings on a yearly basis. Um, we're inspected. Anything that uh, looks like it needs to be taken care of or changed out, um, that is done. Uh, fire alarm, tested every year. We do air quality testing, especially as our, some of our buildings are getting older. We look at the equipment and or make sure that we're still um, giving clean, fresh air to our students and the volume that, uh, that they want us to do. Um, our emergency lighting is tested every year. And of course, um, we have safety training that we do for every single employee of our district on a yearly basis. Um, of course, and then the administration um, is also included in that management. Rich is really uh, a big piece of uh, Tom Foley's job. Um, is our health and safety uh, management program. Um, things that we're working on right now, just to give you an idea uh, what we're working on, ventilation improvements. And the biggest piece we're looking at, working on that this year is going to be the, um, the remodeling project over at Highland in the um, old kindergarten rooms. There will be a brand new air handler put onto those rooms as we remodel those. Um, dryer vent replacement. Actually, this was interesting. This came up with a our fire marshal inspection, we actually had a vent that actually wasn't venting anywhere except into the ceiling. So uh, we took care of that. Um, fire alarm replacement, actually, as our, as our equipment is getting older, we actually replaced our fire alarms in, in both Valley View and Highland this past, this past year. Um, we, had a, in, we had to put some sprinkler heads under uh, kitchen hoods, both in the high school and in Highland. Uh, we've had our freezer um, written up as, as a health code violation that was replaced that's the uh, warehouse freezer that's over in Valley View and the warehouse area 
Um, replacement of tile. We, when we talk about asbestos, you know, we look at, there's quite a bit of um, tile that was put into buildings years ago that do have a very small amount of asbestos. This tile is in any, any way in danger to any of our students or our, or our uh, um, employees, but we watch this very closely and we replace them in a, in a, ma in a manner where we're never gonna be in any trouble with those. But we, we certainly can't afford to do the whole, the whole um, district in one year, so we, we spread this over a period of years. Um, and then um, the Department of Health has wanted us to include, uh, well, install some new hand washing sinks and make it more accessible to some of our employees in our kitchen area. So you can see this is actually a, this is actually one of the freezers that we replaced in the in the high school last year. And I think all the ages of our buildings are pretty close to the same age, so everything's kind of hitting at once as we <laughs> as we move through this. Um, the, the next one slated to be changed um, will be at uh, North Park in the very near future. Um, and you can see here that the the, um, the ground under the our play areas um, are monitored, and this, this material is replaced on a regular basis, so we have nice soft soft surface for the children to play on um, in our playground areas. I'll just give you an idea of what we're, what we're spending our money on. Um, Tom and I are very, uh, work very hard not to let our, our levy amount fluctuate on a yearly basis. We don't want to see big increases and the next year go way down and then we see a big increase come back. You see, we kind of have a goal of staying right around that 800,000. Of course, if we go lower, that's great, but we don't want to see a, an eight and then a seven and then a nine. Uh, we see big increases. Uh, but in 2013, we're spending about $840,000 on our health and safety projects. And the budget going forward, we're looking at this point about $700,000 for next fiscal year, seven thirty seven dollars 37 on the year after. Um, if, of course, as things come up, we have to, once in a while, we have to add small things. Usually they're small things at this point, but I think we have everything that's, that we know about that's a larger is all included. But we might see, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollar fluctuations pretty easily in this program as we go forward. So, is there any questions on that? Yeah. No, I, I just actually had a comment. Um, the um, first year, I think I was on the board about two years ago. You had brought forward the ten-year facility plan, and we did a tour on all of that. Yes. So it looks. So you had already. It looks like you'd already preempted what they're asking now because you'd already had it written down. Um, I was actually wondering if the, the new members might be able to get some of that information that we had received. Oh, that's a very good idea. And actually, we are we are actually having a, a meeting here next week, talking about financing of our of our schools. And I can certainly include mm -hmm. include that in that in that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to make a general comment. I, I appreciate the the more comprehensive report, and also want to comment on the scorecards too. Just the transparency level. Is fantastic, and it's great to see more transparency in these issues, as well as the, the daily operations of our district. Okay, good. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right. We are moving to our action items for this evening, and um, our first action item is the uh, athletic fee schedule, mm. and um, we have Bill. The Director of Finance and Operations and Mary Busman, Columbia Academy Principal. Welcome. Good evening, Chair Board, Superintendent Kelly, members of the board. Um, we are here for what we hope will be a quick item, and that is to ask for your approval for the revised activities fee schedule for the 2013 14 school year, as was presented two weeks ago at the board meeting. At the work study, yeah. It was. No, no. you're right. Last week at the board meeting. Oh, last week. Last week. Last week. Yeah. It was last week. Work session. Work session. Work session. Yeah, but it was a whole winter ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been here the whole winter. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah. so. The days just blend together. They do. Yeah. 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 But we All did right. present it to you. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Motion by Lori, seconded by Ted. Any discussion? Yeah, Laura. Uh, yeah, I just I just want to make a comment as far as this new fee schedule that um, that it, our fees will either be staying the same or will actually be reduced. Correct. And um, and there's going to be a lot more consistency on how we award scholarships. So just um, just letting everybody know about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think it's also important to note that the the goal of the fee structure is to help as many students be involved as possible mm -hmm. and to increase. We want students to be involved in our extracurricular activities. So mm -hmm. 
we can encourage them to this way, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Any more comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next on our agenda, the board, we ask to approve early childhood fees, early childhood fee schedule. We have Bill and uh, Kristen Stunkel, Director of Community Education. Good evening, Chair Bardell, members of the school board, Superintendent Kelly. Last week, we also brought our early childhood um, scholarship fee schedule to your work study for review. And this evening, we're bringing it tonight for your approval. With our early childhood programs, we have ECFE, and we also have our pre-K program. With our pre-K program, it is fee-based. Um, and for those families for whom they're not able to pay the, the fee, um, then they can apply for a scholarship. With this change in our scholarship program, we would have those families complete the free and reduced lunch form, and that would help to determine not only based on their family income, which has been our only determinant in the past, but also based on their family size, uh, what would be an appropriate fee for them to be able to pay. They would work with our early childhood coordinator, Karen Kramer, to make that determination. All right, thank you. Do I have a motion to move that forward? I'll make a motion. Second. Motion by John, second by Lori. Any discussion? Yeah, Beth. Yeah, I, do, I do think this is a fair way because when you have more people in your family, it's more of a burden, no matter what your income is. So um, this takes that into account. So. Thank you. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Next on our agenda um, is steam pipe replacement bid, and that is Bill. Me. Uh, Chairman Bardell, members of the school board, uh, Superintendent Kathy Kelly. I guess tonight I bring you the, uh, the bid tabulation for the uh, bids to take care of our steam pipe um, situation we had last winter where we um, have a steam pipe that failed in the high school on the back side. Um, we are planning to replace that this summer. And you can see the bids came in um, relatively well. This is actually under budget than what uh, we had anticipated. A uh, low bid um, is NAC Mechanical and Electrical Services for 193000 There is an alternative bid there. They also have the lowest, well, not, we add them together, they're still the lowest bidder of 21000 uh, for alternate one. And what this alternate one is, is, is when we take the old pipe out, if we have issues with the pipe that's running from the wall, where it runs through the wall over to the boiler, um, this pipe may be replaced at the same time. But we will wait and see the condition before we take, make that decision. Uh, I'm just looking for, um, from a, um, to have you award the bid to NAC Mechanical and Electrical Services. All right, do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Motion by Ted, second by John, any discussion? Seeing none. Oh. I, I just wanted to make a comment. It was it was kind of um, interesting that we actually got a lower bid even the second time around than than we had the first time. So that that was pretty that's pretty awesome. Um, the good work that you put into that. Yes, I, I was I was very pleased with how it turned out. Mm -hmm. um, we had you know we had, we need to come back and rebid it, and we and we saw lower prices across the board. It was very good news for us. Yeah, but, and and again, this is this is a very old pipe that um, hopefully this new piping will last us as long as at least at least as the old one. <laughs> yeah well this is I, I believe it was 1968 this pipe was put in yeah um, the quality of um, some of these newer pipes that they're putting in um, actually should give us a longer life than this one has given I don't know all right any other comments seeing none all those in favor say aye aye opposed that motion is carried yeah, thank you very much yeah thank you all right looks like bill again uh, we're gonna talk about um, no yeah, Bill and Brian Hennekins, Director of Technology and Security. We're going to talk about phone replacement. Sorry, Brian. That's all right. Uh, Chairperson uh, Bardell, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly, um, before you have a, a motion to approve um, for a new uh, phone system in the district, um, we have bids in. And on the final page of the spreadsheet is actually the bid tabulation. Mm -hmm. And um, as you can see, Integra um, was our low bid at 263000 Five hundred and twenty-one dollars and eighty-four cents, um, and I think Bill will share um, that uh, we were very happy with um, where things came in, um, and um, we're really happy with uh, 
what we were presented in, in um, demonstrations, and um, we feel confident in asking for um, your approval to move forward with Integra as the um, bid award winner. We also talked about this at, uh, at a work session and, and went through kind of the details of um, the reasoning why uh, we're replacing the phone system and some of our needs you know, with our current phone system and some of our needs that aren't being met by our current phone system and, and moving forward. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Motion by Ted, second by Laura. Any discussion? Yeah. One of the things that really um, jumped out at me is that this system is a voice over IP system. So right. it's the latest technology, it's yep. more portable, and also it's also highly reliable compared mm -hmm. to right. what we have now. So the school district needs phone. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Laura. Uh, the other thing that I actually like about this too is that we're going to get the service for seven years and we can that's so potential upgrades and things along those lines and then there's multiple redundancies yep. in the system right. so we don't have a school-wide blackout of the phone system you know at the most inconvenient time so um, it's uh, it's uh, got a pricey price tag but it's it's definitely something we need to do yes all right a lot of work went into this bidding Good job, thank you. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda is discontinuance or reduction of programs and positions for 2013-2014. And we have Elizabeth uh, Rushy and Bill Holmgren here. Chair Bardell, Superintendent Kelly, members of the school board. In January, the school board adopted a resolution directing the superintendent and administration to consider, consider discontinuing programs and positions to effectuate economies in the school district and reduce expenditures. Um, in doing so, I'm asking you today to adopt a, adopt a resolution discontinuing and reducing educational programs and positions due to enrollment and department efficiencies. You have a folder in front of you with a red sheet in it. I will walk through it with you. Um, 7.28 FTE licensed and non-licensed high school positions. This is actually lower than the number you saw last week at the work session. Um, we had a final staffing meeting with high school staff last week, um, administrative staff, and based on enrollment, we were able to adjust that reduction at the high school. 1.42 FTE licensed and non-licensed Achieve positions. Um, the Achieve program will only be servicing 7th and 8th graders in the 13-14 school year. So with no 6th graders, there was a reduction in FTE required. 3.0 FTE licensed kindergarten positions. Every spring, the numbers are lower, so we staff based on actual enrollment. So as enrollment numbers go up, we will add back kindergarten positions if necessary. Um, for both the licensed K-12 special ed positions and the K-12 education assistant positions, uh, these reductions are due both to a decrease in student instructional mitten, minutes as well as due to the federal sequestration. <coughs> District-wide K-12 activities position, we're going from two to one position. And then the last three are all standard operating procedures, um, teacher positions with licensure variances teachers on one-year contracts, serving in a long-term subposition, and then all our positions that are non-renewed for performance. And then due to confidentiality, the superintendent's update will provide a more detailed breakdown for you this week. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Laura, second by Ted. Um, I would just say we, we have looked at this in as much detail as we can, given the confidentiality nature of it. So I want to assure the public of that. Yeah. Yeah, Laura. And and um, a lot of um, a lot of these positions are based strictly on making sure that we don't have teachers teaching empty classrooms, and um, this is all dependent upon guest guest guesses for our enrollment for next year. So this is. This is something we do every year, and they work really, really, really hard on trying to make the best guess. 
I guess maybe I just want to reiterate uh, quickly is we are down 140 students in our high school over the last two years and that's really what is driving the uh, um, the look at this budget and trying to balance it so that we don't have too many staff members next year and we aren't going to run our um, budget at, at, a neg at a deficit. Thank you. All right, let me uh, just read um, the other parts of the resolution. Whereas the School Board of Independent School District 13 adopted a resolution on January 22nd, 2013, directing the administration to make recommendations for reduction programs and positions, and whereas said recommendations have been received and considered by the school board, be it resolved by the school board independent school district number 13 as follows, the following programs and positions or portions there will be discontinued due to enrollment and departmental efficiencies, which Elizabeth um, went through, so I won't repeat it. There's no more discussion. Um, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Meyer? Aye. Mr. Landwehr? Aye. Mr. Larkin? Aye. Mr. Bardell? Aye. Ms. Palmer? Aye. Resolution has passed. All right. The last action item this evening, the last scheduled action item, is uh, the National uh, School Board Association membership. Um, the board will be asked to approve membership in the National School Board Association. And um, I can't remember, was it the work study of the last school board meeting? It was, yeah. The work session. My memory is yeah. faulty. Last week. Um, we uh, kind of went over this, and we um, saw the dues and um, I'll move that forward. I'll second that. Motion by Scott, second by Laura. Any discussion on uh, National School Board membership? I would just yeah, say we, we just went to the, the conference and um, being part of the National School Board Association allows us to get reduced fees for that and also uh, allows us to bring back some of the best ideas in the country to our district. So um, I would hope that we continue to, to get as much value as we can from our membership. Any other discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion has carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Next, uh, I know we have one board topic. Um, a a suggestion came up um, regarding what the school board should should or shouldn't wear at graduation and and the question was whether the school board should wear robes and if not what should they wear so um, I don't know if I so the the um, the issue is 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 you know the school board can decide whether we wish to wear you know the robes or not and if we decide not my suggestion would be that um, it would be business attire you know muted tone that sort of um, decorum um, for graduation so. what's taken place in the past what is <clears throat> um, in the past we have worn robes I don't know how long that that yeah go ahead it's been mixed in this district um, as it is in other districts many times um, uh, school boards uh, represent the community so they dress in, in business attire and we have done that um, through some superintendents and we've had a period where we went with ropes um, uh, which does raise the question are they members of the faculty or are they um, community stakeholders representing and <clears throat> what admin has always done is deferred to the board on what you would like to do as a board so it really is up to this board on how, how they like to continue their own traditions and, and that's ex I'm I'm the one that brought up the issue so and that's exactly the argument that I would put forward is is we do we are community representatives and um, besides the fact that robes can be uncomfortable which is a minor reason but it is reason nonetheless um, I, I think it's important for us to look like the people that we represent which is the community and, and we're not we're not faculty we're, we're the community 
That's my reasoning. I understand from, um, oh, go ahead, Lauren. No, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say I understand um, in inquiry um, um, that a lot of the districts in our area, um, at graduation, the board does wear business attire. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not anything out of the ordinary or unusual or, you know, anything like that. But, um, so, and I inquired, um, you know, just to help educate my, me. It's just the one day of the year I don't have to figure out what I gotta wear. So <laughs> <laughs> There's that. There is that. Um, I, I think we're, I think it kind of helps us more identify with the students. You know, I, 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 I don't know, I rather like it, but you know, the, whatever the board decides, I'll, I'll go along with. Let me see. Other. I guess I hadn't really thought, put much thought into it or thought about it, but now that I kind of hear, you know, different perspectives, I kind of tend to agree with um, maybe business attire seems more appropriate as a board member than, but it really, I don't really have a pref strong preference one way or the other. Is this something that has to be definitive tonight or not? No. I just, I'd be curious to see what Member Lee has to say as well. I mean, it's. How about if I put it out in the superintendent's update um, <clears throat> and then you can just pull back in to um, Don Hoyam and then we'll take the county board that way. That be okay? Is that okay? I'll give yeah. you that information. Yeah. For the record, it doesn't matter to me either way. I guess. But I just wanted to bring it up because I know, depending on what we want to do, you know, we don't want to put the district in a rush mode if you know we decide. So okay. Just wanted to. Is that something you would have to? The district would have to. Do they already have robes, or is that something they have to go and you get? You order them. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, we rent them. Every we yeah. rent them. I do have one other thing too. Yeah, go ahead. I know we one just one request. But I know we we talked about these uh, the goals of you know the various schools. It would be nice uh, at some point to see uh, get a report of how they've done compared to their goals each year. And maybe I've seen that. I just not recalling it. But uh, I think it's great the schools are setting goals and those are smart goals, which you know stand for you know measurable, achievable goals. It'd be great to get a report to see if they've actually achieved those goals and, and how close they've come. So, just something that struck me tonight. Uh, how do you mean, like when they said that their goal is to increase it by 10%? How exactly. they do from that one there? So, right. the progress from what they're providing for us now. Right. And having the goal itself is, is great because it gives a, a, an, a uh, something to strive for, but to actually see if they make the goal, um, that'd be great to know too. I think that what well, that's easily done. I think that um, in some presentations you did see that, and particularly the elementary ones, um, it was not reflected in tonight's presentation. But I'm certain that we can do something about that. Great, thank you. All right. If no one else has any topics. I just have one quick one, and that is uh, personally thank um, Boy Myers for um, getting us together on a personal note to uh, to get a brick for the heritage. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a very good idea. Um, I wish I would have thought of it. But <laughs> I'm glad somebody did. You're welcome. Thanks for um, coordinating it and everything else. I greatly appreciate it. Easy to do. Um, there are two uh, community events, I believe, that are coming up as well, and I think they're both on the same night. Um, one is, is the Boosters are putting uh, are doing their annual uh, dinner. I think that's is that next. Next, the not the Wednesday. That's not till the eighth. The eighth of May. Yeah. Uh, that's before our next board meeting, and um, and then the uh, where's it right? No, it's right before the next board meeting, um, and then there's also the um, <laughs> neighborhood watch is also I believe on the same night as well. Oh. So um, if you want to get involved with the community, make sure that you um, uh, uh, check those things out. You know through our um, our city city website pages we have a great relationship with the city of Columbia Heights and um, the school district we work really well together so we uh, cross-pollinate all of our good ideas so thanks for the reminder we yeah. can't forget about hairspray at the end of the month that's right oh, yeah. I, I, I knew play. there was a play coming up but I didn't catch the title of it mm -hmm. so how fun the retirement recognition is coming up too right we have our career celebration oh. um, coming up and that is what's 
May 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of things coming up in May. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But Hairspray you can catch not only this weekend, but the following weekend. So you have double trouble if you want to see it twice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I heard all new microphones. Please. Great. <laughs> With that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll adjourn this meeting at 835.